Good day, Grade 12s. Welcome to this next lesson in physical science. Um, again, I would like to urge you to not just join the to join us for this lesson, but also to join the Turnable platform. You can either join it through an app that you can download, or you can go onto the interweb and <laughs> go and find it there. Um, I'd also like to urge you to join the Grade 12 science class. Um, if you do that, then you'll be able to interact with me you can send me messages and you can tell me what you're struggling with and we can go through it um, and ideally it would be nice if this could become a fairly interactive um, venue or area where you could tell me the different areas and or different questions and exam papers and that and then we could work through them and everybody could benefit from that in the meantime and so we've got our numbers up um, and until our sessions work differently. I will be going through today. I'm going to be finishing going through the chemistry paper that we've been going through and then I'm going to move on to the beginning of the grade 12 curriculum. Um, this grade 12 paper it can be found in week 20 on the Turnable platform in the grade 12. It's called a revision week, grade 12 physical science revision week. And you can go in there and download it. It's the Eastern Cape common paper for June, the second paper. I haven't loaded up the memo yet, or nobody has loaded up the memo yet, for the simple reason that um, I prefer you guys to be able to go through the questions without doing them, having the memos available. If once we've finished going through the papers, we will put the memos up. If you have missed any of these lessons and would like to see the recordings, you can just go click on the links. Or if, for example, on this lesson, you struggle to understand something I said or you wanted to go through it again, you can just go back to where you click to get this lesson and you will find the recording. Right, so let's get started. And I want to start with the question that we were doing last night. It's question 7.2. 7.2. Um, I promised you that I would go through it again more slowly because I felt that I hadn't dealt with it very well because there wasn't a lot of space on the page and um, the writing was a bit cramped. So I want to go through it nice and slowly again and make sure you understand because it's a nice question. It's a nice level four question, um, 7.2.3 with eight marks. So it's a decent question and acids and bases have again been one of these sections that have grown in the new curriculum, which means that you are more and more likely to get some nice nitty gritty questions, serious questions on acids and bases, which is why I want to go through this with you. So it says, sodium hydroxide, NaOH, solution of volume 40 cubic centimeters and concentration of one mole per decimeter cubed is prepared. It says, calculate the mass of sodium hydroxide needed to prepare the solution. Okay, so we know that number of moles is concentration times volume and we also know that number of moles is mass over molar mass and we want the mass so we've got the concentration it's one mole per decimeter cubed we've got the volume but it's in cubic centimeters and as I stated yesterday this is not the correct unit the correct unit is decimeters cubed. So we need to convert that to decimeters cubed. And the way you convert cubic centimeters to decimeters cubed is you divide by a thousand. So we're going to go 40 divided by 1000, which is going to be 0, 0, 4 decimeters cubed. Okay, and that is going to be our volume. So the number of moles is concentration, which in this case is 1, times by the volume, which is 0, 0,04. 0, 0,04 gives us the number of moles of 0, 0, 0,04. Now we can use this in our formula of number of moles is mass over molar mass to get the mass. Now you need to use your periodic table in order to find the molar mass of the different things and I'm not whipping out the periodic table because you guys should have a periodic table in front of you at all times when doing your chemistry. It should be in front of you, okay? So it says calculate, oh, sorry, so we number of moles, we're going to work out the molar mass of sodium hydroxide and then we're going to get the mass. So the number of moles equals mass over the molar mass 
of NaOH. So the number of moles is 0,04, so it's 0,04 multiplied by the molar mass of sodium hydroxide. Now sodium's molar mass is 23 plus oxygen, which is 16 plus 1. So that works out to be 40. So we end up with 0,04 multiplied by 40. So the number of moles, so therefore the mass is going to be 1,6 grams, 1,6 grams. The answer therefore for this is going to be 1,6 grams. Okay, nice and easy. So that's actually kind of a because you're using grade 10 stoichiometry and maybe some grade 11 stoichiometry. Of, and the only thing that was tricky really was converting this cubic centimeters into decimeters cubed. Right, the next question gets a little bit trickier. Okay, so I'm going to raise this writing, okay. And let's get started. This is a 40 cubic centimeters of sodium hydroxide solution. Okay, so it's the same as what we had before. All of concentration one mole per decimeter cubed again is added now to 50 cubic centimeters of a 0.06 mole decimeters cubed sulfuric acid, HSO4 solution in a flask. The reaction takes place in the flask is given below. Okay, so we've got a flask. Okay, and I'm drawing very vaguely an oil in my flask. And in your flask, you've got some sodium hydroxide and you've got some sulfuric acid and this is an acid and that's a base so you should form a salt and water which we do awesome now it says calculate the initial number of moles so the number of moles again is concentration times volume and again the volume is given in cubic centimeters but the, the concentration here is in 0 0.06 moles per decimeter cubed. So we're going to go 0.06 multiplied by, and we're going to change it right here to 50 over 1,000. And we're going to pop this in our calculator. So it becomes 0 0.06 multiplied by 50 over 1, 1, 2, 3, and it equals 3 over 1,000, which is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0,003 moles. So the number of moles is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0,003 moles. Okay, cool. Now, the next part says they want the pH of the solution in the flask after the completion of the reaction, the pH of the flask. So let's think about this pH is equal to minus log of the concentration of the H3O plus ions. Okay, so okay, so we need the concentration of the H3O plus ions in order for us to get this answer. Okay, now Let's think about this. It says the 40 cubic centimeters of sodium hydroxide solution in concentration one is added to the 50 cubic centimeters in solution. The reaction taking place is this, okay? And they tell us that well, the first thing we know is that we've got the initial number of moles of sulfuric acid in the flask is 0, 0,03. Please, I mentioned this yesterday, there's now positive marking from here. So it doesn't matter if you got this wrong. Pretend you wrote 0, 0,003 instead of 0, 0, 0,003. It doesn't matter because whatever you got to be used in the 7.2.3, you will get your marks for it. Okay, so what we are doing is looking at this ratio here. Okay, whenever you're doing anything to do with stoichiometry, we're looking at mole ratios always. Okay, so if we look at this, do you agree that we have theoretically, we've got two moles of NaOH have to react with one mole of H2SO4. Okay, that's what we got theoretically. Okay, so we know that over here, because we've worked it out, that this is equal to 0, 0,04 moles. 
that we worked out in the previous question which I raised, okay? And again, that is also going to be carried over marks. If you got that wrong, you would get carried over marks as well, as long as you use the same value. So this is what we actually have. We actually have 0,04 moles of sodium hydroxide, okay? But the theory says that we, for every one mole of sulfuric acid, we're going to need two moles of sodium hydroxide. And we have 0, 0, 0, 0,03 moles of sulfuric acid, which means how many moles of sodium hydroxide do we need? For every, let me write this out, one mole of H2SO4, we need, we need two moles of NaOH, right? But we don't have one mole, we've got 0, 0, 0, 0, 0,03 moles of H2SO4. So that means we need two times 0,003 moles of sodium hydroxide, which means that we're going to need 0,006 moles. So do you agree that the sodium hydroxide is in excess? We're going to use up all the sulfuric acid and we're going to need this stuff. That is what is happening, okay? If that's the case, we're going to have a whole bunch of hydroxyl ions that are free, okay? Because remember that what happens in these solutions is actually this. The NaOH breaks up into Na plus and OH minus ions. And the sulfuric, the sulfuric acid breaks up into H, 2H plus ions plus SO4, 2 minus ions. And in fact, then they work with water and they become hydronium ions, that's beside the point. But because we're using up all the sulfuric acid, we're going to end up with extra hydroxyl ions. Okay, we're going to end up with extra hydroxyl ions. So let's work out how many moles of sodium hydroxide we can have left. So the number of NaOH moles left equals the number that we had initially minus the number that we had initially was 0,04. So it's 0,04 minus the amount we had reacting, okay, which is 0,06. So that leaves me with what? Let's work that out. It becomes becomes 0,034 moles. Okay, that's what's left. Okay, so that's the number of moles that we have got left. But we need a concentration. So we can work out the concentration. The concentration is number of moles over volume. Okay, but the volume is no longer just 40 cubic centimeters or 50 cubic centimeters. It is the total volume of the solution. Okay, total. You'll notice that this is aqueous and this is liquid. So none of this volume has been changed into gas and has escaped. It's all still there. It's just changed form. So therefore, the total volume is now 90 cubic centimeters. But again, what's wrong with this? It is in cubic centimeters and we need it in decimeters cubed. So, this is going to be the number of moles, which is 0, 0, 034, all divided by 90 over 1,000, because that is the volume in decimeters cubed. And now we need to get out a calculator, so let's do that. So, we go. 0, 0, 034 divided by, and I'm going to put it in brackets, 90 divided by 1, 1, 2, 3, close bracket, equals, and it becomes 17 over 47, which can be changed to 0, 0,37777, which we round off to two decimal places, or if you want to be a little bit more accurate because this is a step along the way, you can say 0, 0.378, but I'm going to make this 0.38 immediately. So this becomes the concentration is 0, 0.38 moles per decimeter cubed. Now, remember we said that sodium hydroxide breaks up into sodium plus ions and hydroxide ions, right? So let's have a look at that. I'm just going to change color so you can see what I'm doing. So it's getting a bit cramped again. 
So if the concentration of the sodium hydroxide is 0.38, it means that the concentration of the hydroxide ions is also 0.38 because it's 0.1 talking pH. So we're looking for this thing here. But we know that pH, okay, is equal to, like I said, minus the log of the H. 3O plus ions, but we also know that OH minus the concentration of the drox ions multiplied the concentration of the hydronium ions is always that means that I can get the concentration of the H3O plus ions. I can say H3O plus is equal to 10 to the negative 14 divided by the concentration of hydroxyl ions, which in this case is 0.38. So I can divide it by 0.38, and I can use my calculator, and I'm going to clear this, and I'm actually going to use a fraction thing for a change, and I'm going to go 10 to the power of minus 14, all divided by 0.38 and that becomes 2.63 times by 10 to the minus 14. 2.63 times 10 to the minus 14. And then I can substitute it into this formula here. So I can say pH is equal to minus the log of 2.63 times by 10 to the negative 14. So it's that. And I can go. Of 2 exponent negative 14. So my pH is equal to 13,58. And another way to do this Trick, but you might find this easier. So, if you find this easy and you're cool with this and you don't want to get confused, don't watch the next bit. But if you would like to see another option, then you can watch. Now, I'm just going to erase some stuff. Um, I only want to erase some of the stuff. What I want to erase. Okay, so we, okay, right. I wish this erasure was bigger, but anyway, we don't need any of this, we don't need any of that, and we don't have that, need that, we just were keeping that as a reference. Okay, so here's a trick that you might find easy, especially if you've been given POHs, I mean, if you're given hydroxides, pH plus POH has to always equal 14, okay? And just as much as the formula says pH is equal to negative the log of the hydronium ion, pOH, okay, is equal to minus the log of the concentration of the hydroxyl ion. And we have the concentration of the hydroxyl ion, yeah, it's 0.38. So what you could also do, instead of going the whole tainted um, concentration of the pH, I mean, concentration of the OH times concentration of the hydronium ion, is equal to 10 to the 14 and then working out the concentration of the hydronium ion and then substituting to pH, what you could do is you could use this. You could say pH is equal to minus the log of the OH minus ions, which is minus log of 0, 0,38, right? So we pop that in our calculator. Okay, and you go minus log of 0, 38 close bracket equals and you get 0 
to H. Which is going to be 13 comma 5 x da da So that's another way of doing it. So both of them are correct, obviously. But whichever one is easiest for you. Okay, so you need to just go through it nice and carefully and then do it for yourselves. And I really, really, really would like to suggest that you guys actually go through this question again for yourselves and then watch and see if you get it right. Right, let's move on to the next question. Now it says, a titration between solutions of a strong base and a standard ethanoic acid solution are performed. The acid is added from apparatus X into a flask and the is reached. Okay. First, it says write down a term for the underlined phrase. And the underlined phrase is a point where the indicator changes color. And this is called your end point. It's actually the point at which neutralization has occurred, and that is called the end point. Next, they've asked us to name the apparatus X, which the acid is added from, with, with which the, from which the acid is added, and this is a burette. Okay, there's a burette. Right, now it says, what is the purpose of the white tile? Okay, the purpose of the white tile is to see the end point clearly because you have here an indicator and you're going to be looking for a color change. So obviously if you have a white tile underneath it, it's much easier for you to see the color change. Now it says, a learner performing the titration accidentally adds three drops of acid after the indicator has changed color. When she measures the pH of the solution, after adding the three drops, she finds that the solution has a pH which is greater than seven. A pH which is greater than seven. Okay. Sorry. Um, I'm getting an error message. It says the connection to Skype meeting broadcast service was last attempting to reconnect. So if you guys lose the broadcast, then obviously I'm just going to carry on recording. Um, and then what I want you to do is obviously you'll be able to watch the rest of the recording once, it, once the connection has been re-established. Okay, so it says the learner performing the titration accidentally Adds, oh, sorry, so it says that once she's added this, the pH is greater than 7. It says, with the aid of a balanced equation, explain why the solution has a pH which is greater than 7. Okay, so the point is that we've got standard ethanoic acid, which is CH3COOH, and we've got a strong base. Okay, and what we have got is your ethanoic acid, which is already, we are adding that. So we're going to take our CH3COO negative plus our water is in dynamic equilibrium with CH3COOH plus an hydroxyl ion. Okay, that is the reaction that's happening at the moment. We've got ethanoic acid in solution. Okay, so your ethanoic acid is in solution with water, and when it is in solution with water, it is in dynamic equilibrium. Okay, it's in dynamic equilibrium.
Okay, guys. I don't quite sure what happened there. I think it said that I'd lost the broadcast. And then when I went and pressed the buttons and made it all come back again, it seems to have reconnected. Um, so, yeah, I think we're fine. I think it's working. Um, let me see what it says here. The network quality. Okay, fine. Um, so I'm hoping that you are still getting this broadcast. Um, I'm going to carry on with it and see what happens. Um, if it does go down again, I will carry on and then you guys must just watch a recording. OK, I will make sure it's recorded it, obviously. Otherwise, I will give it up as a bad job. We'll see. Let's see how it goes. OK, so. I was busy saying about the fact that we had to prove, we had to explain why the solution has a pH. Sorry, just a second. Why this has a pH of greater than seven. And what you needed to realize was that ethanoic acid was in solution. So it was mixing with water. Okay, so ethanoic acid is over here. It says that it's standard ethanoic solution, CH3COOH. Now, if you write that out in the form that it would be if it was in solution, you've got your ethanoid ions plus your water is in dynamic equilibrium with your CH3COOH plus your hydroxyl ions, right? Now, what happens is we now added three drops of acid after the indicator changed color. So if we added some acid, what's going to happen? The ethanoid ions are going to react with the water to form the hydroxyl ions and therefore your pH is going to be higher okay and therefore you can have an alkali um, you're going to have a base so or an alkali so therefore your pH is going to be greater than seven so this is the equation you needed to write right now it says three reactions okay lead to the formation of nitric acid so you've got ammonia plus oxygen in the presence of platinum forms nitric oxide, nitrogen oxide plus water. Then you've got nitrogen oxide plus oxygen forms nitrogen dioxide. And you'll notice that delta H is negative, right? Then it says we've got nitrogen dioxide plus oxygen gives you water plus nitric acid. Okay, so those are the three steps that are used to form nitric acid. Now it says in reaction one, platinum acts as a catalyst. What name is given to the energy that a catalyst changes in a chemical reaction? And I'm really hoping you guys know that that is activation energy. That really is a level one question. Level one is basic knowledge that is learning work. So that's activation energy. Reaction two, that's this one, reaches equilibrium in a closed container. Now it says, is the reaction exothermic or endothermic? Give a reason. And the answer is, it is exothermic. And the reason it's exothermic is because delta H is negative. It is smaller than one. So therefore, we, I mean, small, small, yeah, smaller than zero. So therefore, we know it is giving off energy and it's exothermic. Now it says write down two changes that must be made to increase the yield of NO2. So remember there's a difference between changing the rate of the reaction and changing the yield or affecting chemical equilibrium. If we want to change a yield, we can look at a couple of things. The first thing we can look at is temperature. We can look at pressure because these are gases or concentration if there were liquids and we can yeah and we can look at the amount of stuff okay so what we can do, the amount let's talk about amount okay or concentration really so temperature we want to increase this yield we want more of this we have said the forward reaction is exothermic okay so forward reaction does not like temperature so one of the things that we could do is we could decrease the temperature right another thing we could do is play with the pressure all three of these are gases right how many moles of gases do we have on the left hand side we've got three moles and on the right hand side we've got two moles so therefore an increase in pressure would by the shutter's principle 
favor the forward reaction with this fewer moles. So an increase in pressure will yield more NO2. And another thing we could do is we could increase the amount of NO or the amount of O2 because by doing that, we're effectively increasing the concentration and then we are forcing the forward reaction to be favored. But these two would be, I'd say, the ideal answers. Now it says, what is the value of delta H per mole of NO2 formed? So this is the total amount of N of energy given off for this equation, which is giving off two moles of NO2. Now they want to know what is the value of delta H per mole. So obviously, what are we going to do? We're going to take this delta H, which is minus 149.1, and all we're going to do is divide it by two. So we're going to go minus 149,1 divided by two. Why? Because there are two moles yeah, made. So that becomes 74,55. That's 74,55 kilojoules per mole. Okay, let's move on. Now it says, nitric acid reacts with ammonia to produce ammonium nitrate, ammonium nitrate. Write down the name of the type of reaction between an acid and a base. Now, acid and base, there are a couple of names. One that you could write was neutralization, because they do, they neutralize to form a salt and a water. Another name that you could use is protolysis, protolysis, or you could say it was a pro reaction and the reason for the last two names is because an acid base reaction is considered to be a transfer of protons in other words the hydrogen plus ion and therefore it is protolysis or protolytic reaction then it says 8.3.2 which particle proton electron is transferred during the reaction and I've just given you that answer it is a proton Right, 8.3.3. It says, to determine the percentage purity of an impure ammonium nitrate sample, the sample is dissolved in water and allowed to react with a solution of sodium hydroxide according to the following equation. And it's balanced, they say. So we've got ammonium nitrate plus sodium hydroxide from sodium nitrate plus ammonia plus water. Okay, and it says we're given 0 0.204 grams of impure, 204 grams of impure ammonium nitrate, neutralizes exactly, neutralizes exactly 2,4 times by 10 to the negative 3 moles, moles, please note, of sodium hydroxide. And it says calculate the percentage purity of the ammonium nitrate. So obviously of this 0 0.204 grams, not all of this is the pure ammonium nitrate. But we know that all of this is pure is going to be, let's try again. We know that 2.4 times by 10 to the minus 3 moles of sodium hydroxide are completely neutralized by the ammonium nitrate. Okay, so therefore we can say, well, the ratios of this is one mole of ammonium nitrate needs one mole of sodium hydroxide, okay, if they want to be completely neutralized. But we don't have one mole, we were told that it uses 2,4 times by 10 to the negative 3 moles of sodium hydroxide which means that it must use 2,4 times by 10 to negative 3 moles of ammonium nitrate, right? So all that we need to do now is find out what that is in mass. And we know that number of moles is mass over molar mass, right? So we've got the number of moles. We can get the molar mass from the periodic table so we can work out the mass that actually was reacted, okay, which actually neutralized this. So we can do that. Let's do that. So we've got the number of moles is 2,4 times by 10 to the negative 3 
times by the molar mass of ammonium nitrate, which is going to be 14 because that's the molar mass of nitrogen plus 1 plus 14 plus 3 times 16. 3 times 16. Okay, so we end up with this being 2,4 times by 10 to the negative 3 times by 80. And we put that in our calculator. So we go 2.4 exponent negative 3 multiplied by 80. And we get... 0,192 grams. So this is 0,192 grams. And normally I round off to two decimal places, but the original was given to me in three decimals. So I'm going to carry on working with the three decimals. So do you agree that this was the amount that was pure because this is what was used? This is the amount of actual stuff that reacted with the sodium hydroxide. The rest was impure, it wasn't actually the ammonium nitrate. So we can work out this percentage purity by going 0,192 divided by 0,204 times by 100 over 1. So we're going to pop that in our calculator. We're going to go divided by, um, I'm blank. 0, 0,204 equals times by 100 equals SD, and that's 94.12. So percentage purity is 94,12%. Ta-da! Sure. Okay, so that there is the last question on the chemistry paper. And you know what, Great Holes, I'm actually going to stop now because I was going to move on to be working with the skills for scientific investigation, but I'm actually going to start that in tomorrow's lesson. I strongly urge that you go through these questions by yourself and then watch the video and see if you got it right. And I will be getting someone to upload the memo onto the system so that you guys can download the memos as well and work through them. Have a great day.